fellow patriot, the Cuban communist regime is cracking down on the Cuban people who are fighting for freedom, homeland, and life. As we saw with the demonstrations at the White House on Sunday, pressure is building for the Biden administration to take action to help the people of Cuba. The time for action is now. Today, the American Conservative Union, Bienvenidos US, Republican National Hispanic Assembly, and the Tea Party Patriots, along with the House Cuban Working Group, will hold a press conference and rally demanding action by the Biden administration against the oppressive communist dictatorship of Cuba. Join Senator Marco Rubio, Leader Kevin McCarthy, Rep. Mario Diaz-Ballard, Commissioner Brendan Carr, Senator Ted Cruz, Rep. Alex Mooney, Jenny Beth Martin, Rick Scott, Gordon G. Chang, Matt Schlapp, and Mercedes Schlapp for a rally at the U.S. Capitol. This is an actual email that I received from the conservative leadership in this country. Think about this. Right now, there exists a person who wakes up in a very small apartment in one of the more dangerous areas of Washington, D.C., which they share with two other people. This person gets dressed picks up four iced coffees for his superiors, and then goes to work as an intern for no pay. This person writes that email, goes home afterwards, convincing himself, assuring himself that he's had a productive day. He tells himself that he's a DC operative. He's making moves. He confuses proximity with influence. Oh, I hand Matt Schlapp a coffee every morning. This means I have pull. And this person is literally convinced that parroting CIA talking points in an email to well-meaning conservatives in this country, particularly our wonderful baby boomers, is a legitimate endeavor. You could replace every instance of Cuba with America in that email, and it would make perfect sense. It would actually, it would make more sense, but they don't want to do that. And they don't want to talk about that because their allegiance, as we mentioned uh, in the last video, is not to the truth or to Americans, but rather to their own self-image. So we're going to go over why all of a sudden this is a huge deal, the truth about what's happening in Cuba, what's actually happening in America, why we're so fixated on this idea of communism as our enemy, how this whole issue affects our identity and our sovereignty as Americans, and basically how the whole thing is a psyop and how everybody talking about it is either grifting or falling victim to it, except us because we're geniuses. And we're going to stay tuned with adequate audio quality this time. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Look at us go. Second video of the week. Good audio, good video, which means I actually, I don't have to get shot with frozen paintballs and I don't have to give a billion dollars to black people. I was really looking forward to one of those. Which one? It is for the reader to decide. But yeah, it's been really interesting um, the last few weeks kind of watching just how quickly and with how much passion the right can truly mobilize in this country. And also just how disappointing it is that our energy is typically redirected into something that isn't actually going to achieve anything tangible for us, which I would argue is basically by design. It's like a pressure release valve, right? Um, and if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that there tend to kind of be like these overarching trends in what we talk about that can tie into each video under that umbrella in their own way. So for a while, it was family structure. We did over-sexualization and premature sexualization. We did neocons and fake conservatives. Now I think we're kind of like in a transitory phase where we've been hitting on that while also covering things like the importance of having power, um, having political infrastructure, et cetera. And Usually kind of depends on what I've been thinking about recently, what I've been reading. But I bring this up now to illustrate that point as it pertains to the whole Cuba thing. And we might not be on the same page yet, you and I. You might be asking yourself, now wait a minute, I thought we didn't like communism. The Cubans are being oppressed by communists. America must fight back. So just know we probably agree on the problems, but not necessarily the solutions to those problems. So just keep that in mind because a lot of people have been doing the same thing that the left does when you disagree with them. You know, the whole, oh, well, you don't like gun control? Well, you must support people dying. Oh, you don't like Congress drafting legislation to grant the Biden administration war powers to deal with Cuba? Well, you must support communism. Like, let's not blow things out of proportion. For now, I just want to note that in a matter of weeks, even days probably, the majority of the right in this country has gotten fired up about Cuba, about fighting for the liberation of the Cuban people, etc. Meanwhile, we literally have political prisoners in this country who are being held in solitary confinement because they walked into a building after being told that they were allowed to by federal police. So just keep that in the back of your head while we talk about this that if real people, good people, real conservatives were able to take power in some of these institutions, like think about the impact that we could have when given that opportunity to direct the energy of the country in a positive, effective direction. It would be beautiful. Also, by the way, by popular demand, we're doing merch again soon. Be on the lookout for that. I don't have Twitter anymore because I got banned for telling people to call their congressmen. So uh, it'll be announced only here or on Instagram. So check that out. But anyways, the meta point here for this whole thing, this whole Cuba thing that we need to seriously digest and internalize is that the media in this country, our elected officials are prioritizing Cubans over Americans and even Cuban Americans over Americans, which we'll talk about in a second. Of course, this is nothing new, but 
why is it that in this particular case, these people are more comfortable defending Cubans than Americans? Like, why are they more comfortable standing up for the freedom of the Cuban people than for the freedom of the American people? Maybe what's happening in Cuba is terrible. Maybe it's just as bad as they say. I'd believe it, but that's missing the point. And I mean this in the most sympathetic and respectful way possible. I do. But as long as there are American citizens being persecuted by a weaponized conglomerate of intelligence agencies, law enforcement bureaucracies, big tech companies, financial institutions, payment processors, as long as that's happening in this country, I frankly don't care in the slightest about what is happening in Cuba. It is of virtually no importance to me. And if you disagree, you're a globalist. Like, that's what that means. Because as a sovereign nation, we have to prioritize our best interest, and our government is supposed to prioritize our best interest. And when that doesn't happen, that's a serious problem. It's not sustainable. It is super suicidal. And the icing on the cake is that not only are we not being prioritized, but exactly what they have used to spark the ire of the public is what is actually happening to American citizens on this soil. So it's not just like with trade policy where we lose factories to Mexico or China, we're not being prioritized. It is literally that we as the dissenting voices in a society that is occupied by a hostile regime, we're being persecuted for that dissent. And the people who understand that are suppressed by the screams of the mob who have been commanded by the people who are supposed to be representing us that, well, we really just need to be focusing on Cuba right now. They don't have freedom in Cuba. Okay, well, we don't have freedom here, and we haven't for a very long time. So I don't exactly understand why multi-million dollar media and activism campaigns for Cuba are in the cards right now. That's not true. I understand it perfectly well. And it starts with Teddy Roosevelt, great president, great man, but he understood something very well that we have lost touch with as we've lost our sense of national identity. Chicken versus egg, I guess, whatever. That's the idea of the hyphenated American. I will read to you this quote, um, which I believe was from a speech to the Knights of Columbus in 1915. He said, there is no room in this country for hyphenated Americanism. When I refer to hyphenated Americans, I do not refer to naturalized Americans. Some of the very best Americans I have ever known were naturalized Americans, Americans born abroad. But a hyphenated American is not an American at all. The one absolutely certain way of bringing this nation to ruin, of preventing all possibility of its continuing to be a nation at all, would be to permit it to become a tangle of squabbling nationalities, an intricate knot of German Americans, Irish Americans, English Americans, French Americans, Scandinavian Americans, or Italian Americans, Americans, each preserving its separate nationality, each at heart feeling more sympathy with Europeans of that nationality than with the other citizens of the American Republic. There is no such thing as a hyphenated American who is a good American. The only man who is a good American is the man who is an American and nothing else. I agree with that 100%. That should be completely obvious and not at all controversial to everybody. Like, if you're going to be an American, then you have to be an American. If you maintain allegiance or loyalty to the country from which you originate, then America can't even exist because eventually everybody here will just be here, right? Like, they won't be an American in any sense besides geographically, and the country can't survive that way. We've talked about this before, too. The nation of immigrants, that talking point, why it's not true. Think about the term in itself, though. A nation of immigrants. The term itself is corrupted. The word nation means a distinct people with a shared history, culture, language, etc. How can you be a nation of people if all of those people have different languages, different cultures, different histories? You can't. It is literally impossible. A nation of immigrants would be defective. It would be irreparable because there can be no square one. There are no shared roots, and you can't have a shared destiny if you don't have shared roots. You would simply be this population of competing interest groups fighting over wealth and power to be allocated to their particular groups. Ring a bell? So here's basically the problem. You now have a large Cuban-American population in Florida, which is an influential and important state for Republicans, and results in the GOP is catering to their specific ethnic wants above the needs of the American people and the national interest. And this is not to disparage Cuban-Americans or Americans who are of Cuban descent. However you identify, don't take it like that. It's not the point. If you love America, you love our history, you love our culture, our values, that is great. This is simply to illustrate the problem because a lot of people don't seem to understand that if your adopted country is in disarray, then you are obligated to prioritize the needs of that country first. There can be no hyphenated identities. There can be no dual loyalty. You are either an American or you shouldn't be here. Frankly, that's the same thing that China would tell you. That's the same thing that Russia would tell you. And that's why they're serious countries and we're not. We don't even have enough respect for ourselves to require that you pledge total allegiance to our country if you're going to live here. It is literally cucked. We are literally cucked. Bro, she's not committed to you. You deserve better. I know, I know, but she's just so enriching. She makes really good food. Her music is so good. Bro, listen to me. She's wearing other guys' t-shirts in public, bro. Yeah, but she's not with those guys anymore, so I don't see the problem. The problem, bro, she's taking money out of your bank account to pay for their problems. Well, she's just so enriching and the utter state. This is the problem. You have people in this country who will call themselves Cuban Americans, and they are demanding that our country cater to their particular ethnic interests, which in itself is not good. But then when factoring in how what they're against happening in their country is literally happening in our country to Americans, 
And in many cases, even to a more extreme degree, it becomes worse. And the GOP, they take this and they run with it for several reasons, which we will get into in a second. But first, product mode. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? You look at South Africa, you look at what's happening, and that's probably a pretty good model for our future. Folks, it is getting crazier out there, and more and more of you are choosing to exercise your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms with American-made We the People holsters. And these guys are actually more than just holsters. They're actually becoming something of a destination for all patriotic Americans to go to. So go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. Check out their complete line of patriotic shirts. They're 100% American-made tactical gun belt with a proprietary talon buckle. They even have their own line of bacon jerky been flying off the shelves they sent me some it's actually pretty epic i've never been into like snacking like eating snacks i've always been more of like a structured meal kind of guy the jerky is definitely the move because it's protein based so you're not just like eating chips or something it's very lean and you need more meat in your diet if you want your testosterone to be where your grandpa's was when he was at your age so there's that but most importantly we the people holsters are custom molded to fit your exact firearm for a quick smooth draw with thousands of options to choose from plus a selection of custom printed holsters you're sure to find the right fit for your lifestyle so go to we the people holsters.com slash doyle right now you can get an additional $10 off with the offer code DOYLE. Every holster, a lifetime guarantee. If it's not a perfect fit, send it back for a full refund. We the people holsters.com slash DOYLE. We the people holsters.com slash DOYLE. Very epic. So why is the GOP going all out with this PSYOP? And it is a PSYOP, but it's for a few reasons. So we'll talk about why they specifically are running with this. And then we'll talk about why that ultimately serves the interests of the American regime, the globalist American empire, etc. So firstly, the most brass tax reason is simply that in Florida, there exists the Cuban exile lobby. Florida has to be obsessed with Cuban politics because there are a lot of Cubans uh, there who vote for Republicans, largely because of their disdain for communism, and in particular, the Castro regime. So anti-Castro policy is very important to them. And the GOP thinks or maybe knows that in order to keep that demographic voting for Republicans, they're going to have to do things like this. And so this kind of gets back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, are you really an American if you're going to prioritize the country in which you used to live over America, the country in which you live now? Are you really a conservative or a Republican if all it takes to lose your support is failing to cater to that particular interest of yours, which, lest we forget, has no impact virtually on the day to day of the average American. Moreover, that the same tactics being weaponized against Cubans are being weaponized by our government against those those average Americans. Like you've got people waving Cuban flags outside of the White House demanding freedom. Really? Freedom for who? Do you see America as a home or do you see America as a tool that you can exploit so that you can help your actual home? Few will ask this question, but it's the most important question right now. But in terms of just optics or branding, it is once again the eternal appeal to Reagan nostalgia, to this boomer understanding of geopolitics. It's still the Cold War. Cuba bad. Cuba bad. We have to fixate on this because as conservatives, we like literally that's the only thing we've ever accomplished, at least in the last century, that the USSR collapsed and we, I guess, didn't. And so we think that we won the Cold War. And because we've allowed for any, any national purpose or identity to be stripped from us, we can no longer exist for anything. So all that we can do is be against against something. And the obvious answer to that would be our old enemy, communism. It's actually it's sort of a paradox when you think about it. Like we simultaneously ride this perceived momentum because of the Cold War. It's the only thing we've ever accomplished. And even that, even that accomplishment is debatable. While we still mobilize people against the evils of communism, the threats of communism in the world, not in America because we're free or whatever, but the rest of the world, which would suggest that we actually didn't win the Cold War, right? A couple points on that, though. Be very careful who you see covering this whole Cuba thing because it's getting a lot of attention right now. And what that means is that there are a lot of people who are going to be using it to grift and to get attention to help themselves. And they do this by virtue signaling, virtue signaling their anti-communism. What we're talking about right now is not the popular opinion. I would never be allowed to get up on a podium at one of those events or whatever, make this speech let alone get a $10,000 speaking fee for doing it like some of these other people. So just be very careful. Watch closely who's jumping on this bandwagon. Understand that they're probably acting in bad faith because frankly, anti-communism in a vacuum is stupid. If you're anti-communism because you just want to be able to buy things more efficiently, I'm convinced that you're not an actual person. It's not about economics. It never was. It's about the soul of the nation. And communism is godless, it's satanic, it is unnatural, and it's slavery. Remember that. It's not that there wasn't food because, well, the econometric calculations were less efficient than the free market. It was because they wanted people to be starving. They wanted them to be too weak to resist them. You vacuum. You are a vacuum. They want to enslave you. They already are artificially creating food shortages. Just ask any farmer. You will eat the bugs, you peasant. But seriously, if you are right wing, and especially if you are in a position of influence, whether that's in media, public office, wherever, and you have been going on and on, virtue signaling about the poor Cuban people, but you have not mentioned or even thought to care about the American citizens who are literally now political prisoners at the hands of a hostile regime in this country, in your country, you are either evil 
or retarded. That actually, that reminds me of a really good quote from a very smart right-wing essayist. This isn't exactly it, but it was something like, there exists two parties in the United States of America, an evil party and a retarded party. Occasionally, the two parties will join forces to do something evil and retarded. This is called bipartisanship. And that's basically the case with all these operations. This is the same party that has spent decades and hundreds of millions of dollars telling us that we should just view each other as individuals. But then I have to have my attention redirected away from trying to see how I can help the political prisoners in this country to, hey, hey, look at this based Cuban who doesn't like communism. He knows that communism is bad because he lived through it. I don't need to live under communism to know that it's retarded. It is contrary to human nature. Hey, we brought in the guy who tried to have sex with an electric pencil sharpener. Let's give him speaking fees and book deals to tell us what we already know. It's not a good idea. Never forget these people are more comfortable defending Cubans than Americans. I don't even mean Cuban Americans. I mean literal Cubans who live in Cuba. They are catered to more than the average American in this country. They care more about political prisoners in Cuba than they do about political prisoners in our country. And they would never, they would never show you those pictures. They would never show you the pictures of Americans locked up in Washington, D.C., being beaten by guards, being locked up in solitary confinement. But if you look at any mainstream right-wing publication right now, it's Cuba, it's Cuba, and then it's Cuba. It's socialism is bad. Cuban tells us why. The ride never ends. But what about Baked Alaska, right? Guys like him. He was a guy hugely influential back in 2016, getting Trump's base excited. He was effective. He does a little trolling. Now the feds are trying to charge him with trespassing and disorderly conduct because he went into the Capitol after the police opened the doors for everybody to let them into the Capitol. They're threatening to charge him with obstruction of Congress for doing the same thing that the left has done on numerous occasions, occupying federal buildings to protest, except this time the place was totally evacuated and the police literally let them in. And he's being charged as a co-conspirator alongside a guy called Ricky Vaughn for, I'm not even kidding, retweeting a meme. Ricky Ricky Vaughn is being criminally charged for posting memes that inf interfered with the election. Have you heard about this? No, you have not, I would imagine. So much for those free speech warriors on the campuses, right? They're supposed to be telling us about this stuff, right? They're literally calling Baked Alaska a domestic terrorist, a white nationalist, because he made jokes. So I'm putting a link to his legal defense page in the description. Call him a terrorist, call him a white nationalist. Those words don't mean anything anymore. And just know, to the haters and losers watching, just know that I know and my audience knows that you know that you are lying and you're a terrible person and you're gross. You're not a real human being. You are the symptom of a dying society. And the GOP goes right with it because it aggrandizes them. It gets the people excited. Most importantly, they're allowed to do it because it serves the interests of the American regime, which are as follows. Distract American patriots from the reality of how utterly hostile and tyrannical their own government and country has become towards them by pointing at the Cuban government and saying, those are the bad guys. Look, look at, look at them being oppressive, authoritarian, tyrannical, communists, statist fascists. Those are the true enemies of freedom in the world. Wasn't Tony Montana Cuban? That's the parallel. Tony Montana is the Cuban government, drunkenly calling out the American government. You need people like me to point the finger and say, that's him, that's the bad guy. It's so true. This is totally unrelated, but I have to tell it now. One time a couple years ago, my younger cousin came over and he had just seen Scarface for the first time. And he goes, bro, Johnny, I gotta show you my Tony Montana impression. I was like, all right, let's hear it. He goes, well, you know, the thing is, it might get kind of loud. And for context, my mom already thinks he's basically an externality, like bull in a china shop, just being loud, breaking things, total externality. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, just do it quietly then. He's, well, that's not how it goes if I want to do it correctly. So I'm just like, dude, just do it, but don't be loud about it. He's like, okay, I'll try. He pauses for a second, immediately just, go ahead, you fucking cockroaches, immediately, other room. Oh my, Keller, get out of here. I can't believe. He just, he could not figure out how to do it without being loud. But, you know, at least he did it correctly, right? Chaotic good. That's what that reminded me of. But that's why the American system likes this whole thing. It acts as a pressure release valve. It redirects the animosity and unrest towards a completely separate government that has absolutely no effect on the lives of the average American. They want to spread freedom to the Cuban people, which means democracy, which means feminism. It means gender theory, critical race theory, all those blessings of liberty, right, David French? They want to bring third world countries into line with their globalist agenda. They want them to be just as enlightened. And also think about what that actually would do. Like if we pursue uh, regime change in one of these countries again, maybe another refugee crisis, right? We create another failed state, got a couple hundred thousand refugees, send them to Florida, right? Why not? It's close. There's a strong Cuban population there already. It makes sense. Think about what a couple hundred thousand Cuban refugees would do to the state of Florida, which is one of the strongest points of defense that conservatives have right now. The immigrants who come from Cuba, immigrants who come legally, they're actually pretty close to like the cream of the crop, relatively speaking. Like they're a lot better than the immigrants that we take from some of these other countries. But seriously, like that's the difference. The difference between immigrants and refugees. 
totally different calibers and classes of people. Maybe that's a good idea. Make Florida look a little bit more like the third world so people don't want to support them anymore, even though they've been especially great on policy for the last two years, let's say, for example. We want to introduce democracy, which is cringe, and in the meantime, potentially create yet another refugee crisis that will flood Western countries, and we have to do it because the Cuban people don't have the freedom that we enjoy. Really? Let's compare Cuba and America. The oppressive communist regime in Cuba versus the free constitutional republic of the United States of America, where at least I know I'm free. So in Cuba, the conversations between political dissidents are monitored. In America, the conversations between political dissidents are monitored as well, along with their private information. In Cuba, the state will unfairly sentence political dissidents. In America, the state unfairly sentences political dissidents and also uses taxpayer dollars to pay people to entrap political dissidents to bring the books down on them even harder. In Cuba, you are denied equal access to buying goods. In America, you are denied equal access to buying goods and opening bank accounts and getting a job, and getting into college, and having justice, etc. In Cuba, they'll cut off your internet access. In America, they'll kick you off the internet, except for pornography websites. In Cuba, they'll torture political dissidents. In America, they keep them in solitary confinement. They deny them bail. They give them little to no information, etc. In Cuba, they use their power to keep dissenting speech in check. In America, power is used to prevent those who dissent from earning a living or enjoying a, a normal, comfortable lifestyle. Like in Cuba, you can't flee if you're a dissident. In America, you can't even fly if you're a dissident. So now, what I'm asking you is this. Where are our protests? Where's our email, Matt? Where the hell is our congressional caucus? Where's the congressional gamer caucus? The brilliant thing about the American regime is that it outsources a lot of its dirty work to the corporations that control it in the first place. And the people are so stupid that they think that it's okay if they're getting screwed over by these corporations. My rights are being taken away by these corporations, and that's fine, so long as it's not the government. Literally, I am Jack Nicholson. What I'm saying to you is this. When you're facing a loaded gun, what's the difference? When you're facing overwhelming power that seeks to destroy you because of what you think, what's the difference? Do you know why the state exists? The state doesn't exist to simply exist and then try to prevent itself from screwing you over. The state exists to prevent people from screwing each other over, you idiot. It exists to protect our rights. Why else would it exist? This is literally the reason for its existence. So yes, I have the freedom to speak my mind. This was given to me by God because he loves me. The society has restructured itself such that the social media platforms are now the new public square. If I cannot speak my mind in the new public square because those who control it don't like what I have to say, too bad. I want guaranteed freedom of speech on social media platforms because without that, the practical application of my rights is diminished and that is being done intentionally. And if you think, oh, well, guaranteeing my right to speak my mind on social media, well, that's a bad idea because it's going to come back to bite us. I implore you to write that out. How exactly is guaranteeing our right to free speech online going to put us in a worse position five years from now than if we allow them to totally erase us? Do you think that maybe that idea was put into your head by a think tank that was paid by these people in the first place to convince you of the principled nobility of your own erasure? Wake up. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so of course you get notified when I post, which is going to be more often, so you're gonna, gonna definitely want to have those on, I would argue, and then also share the video with a friend, because of what utility is heck off commie, if not one that brings people together? In the comment section, in your living rooms, father to son, brother to sister, I don't know if grandparents are watching Heck Off Kami. I kind of take it a little bit rough on the boomers sometimes. It's out of a good, I mean, I mean well, I really do, but, you know, we criticize because we love. Um, oh, well. Day of the pillow imminent. But thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. I missed. There we go.